So I had to make a couple phone calls. But I knew that the number one thing that would warm your heart on your birthday was a Dane game. I made a couple phone calls, and it looks like Daddy Brad and the boys delivered. This was Dane Danger's best game of the season at minimum. I think maybe his career as an Illinois Fighting Illini. 18 points, 8 rebounds. He single-handedly saved this game. And I, I should be careful using the terminology saved this game. Because last time I said Nico Moretti did that when the starters got benched for effort and I got killed for it. I thought Dane saved this game. Uh, Brad had to go to the bench. He went to Dane. He went to Moretti again. DGL was even on the court. And uh, those guys played inspired ball, but it was pretty much single-handedly Dane punking the Ohio State front court. In the end, Terrence Shannon with some timely plays as well. And Coleman Hawkins, two-time champion, Coleman Hawkins made every single little play late that he possibly could. I mean this from the bottom of my heart. That was champion shit from Coleman. And Ohio State, the Jake Diebler era, I mean, that's a better basketball team than they've been all season. Got yeah. sent home with an L. Sent home with an L. How are you feeling about your dang game? Uh, yeah, let, let's, I'm going to get that out the way just for starters. Um, I, I, I see you all out there. I see everyone out there talking about dang this. Dane that we're in the danger zone. Y'all weren't, y'all, y'all weren't, y'all weren't there. Okay. As the great philosopher once said, and I forgot who the philosopher was, y'all wasn't outside, man. And it's just good to see my dog, Dane. I don't even, I don't got to do the per 40 thing or the per 20 thing on this recap because we saw what it looks like when he played minutes and all like just Dane game jokes aside, he like actually single handedly dominated that game when it was in doubt both just on the boards. He was even making free throws. He was bullying dudes. He was running the floor. He had the hooks. He had the one dribble, dunking, yelling, all like the whole Dane Danger experience. It was really good to see. And, you know, you pointed it out. This this game, actually every second I was watching it, the thought in my head was never Illinois is going to win this basketball game. I'll be honest with you. Like as I was watching the game, I'm like, Ohio State's going to win this basketball game. They are like, uh, you know, Thornton's doing things. Scotty Middleton looked good. Royal Key, like all these guys, Jameson Battle. I was like, you know what? This is it. And when Jameson Battle hit that last three over Damascus, I was like, this is fitting. This is what I thought was going to happen. I was like, Ohio State has done enough. They're going to win this basketball game. And then comes that man of the Hawkins family tree. After one of the worst performances I've seen in a long, long time during the during the whole stretch of the game, it got down to winning time, and on both ends of the floor, Coleman did nothing but make extremely winning plays, which is just the complete polar opposite of what we saw at the Penn State game, basically. Like, the at the Penn State game, the last four minutes of the game was Coleman making mistakes left and right on both ends of the floor. This game, he did every little thing on both ends of the floor to get a victory. He he was he was special in this last two minutes, or last, let's call it three minutes. Yeah, I, he made every single little play, and it was hustle plays. Like It was champ shit, like you said. That was yeah, champ shit. It was intangible little stuff, and I know we've made a lot of jokes at his expense when he's made mistakes in big moments. I thought also, for the record, I thought Coleman was horrendous for the first 30 minutes of this game. He wouldn't shoot the ball. Awful. It was weird stuff. He just didn't look like himself. And then, uh, yeah, I mean, there was a uh, – I want to make sure I read this correctly because there was a report from somebody that was in the arena. Brian Hamilton – uh, tweeted out Brad Underwood absolutely on one during this timeout, lighting his team up. Quote, do you want to play? Give me a F-bomb answer was the question to Coleman Hawkins in a timeout live from the arena here. So, like, I, I look, Coleman responded. That's that's my takeaway. I don't know what was going on early. I don't know where everybody was. But late, man, it was all hustle. It was all hustle. He got every rebound. He got fouled. The, the Zed Key screen, what a stupid play by Zed Key, but what, what a veteran move by Coleman. The offensive rebound late, like he just, I haven't seen a player single-handedly win a game with hustle, but that's what Coleman did down the stretch, and that's why Coleman Hawkins is special. And I think he he has come into his own on this team where they've embraced that Terrence Shannon and Marcus Damask are the offensive go-to players. I don't think it's a coincidence Coleman's having his career best year when he's allowed to focus on the little things and he doesn't need to do more than he's been asked of. And he, when needed, he can step up and score offensively, but he's just in the perfect role. It was really nice. Um, 
What was up with Marcus Damask? I thought he was, I mean, on a different planet tonight. And I think that bodes pretty horribly for Illinois if this continues. It does bode pretty horribly, but I'm I'm chalking that up to he won't play that bad again. Not that bad. That was the worst Marcus Damask game I've ever seen. Uh, I don't think any of his shots were close. No. Uh, besides, besides the three that he made, I'm talking about every single miss was as off as off to get. Luckily for him, Terrence Shannon stepped up. And we talked about it in the preview, like, it, it, in order for them to win this game, we actually predicted we're like, we want to get a Damash Shannon same time superstar performance. We did not get that in this game. But luckily for them, you get you get your 18 and 8 from Dane Danger. Quietly, because Dane Danger had that great of a game, you get 12 and 10 from Tyrod, a double double from your point guard in this game. So it's like other guys, I think, stepped up. Um, it, it, it is a little bit concerning that there's like a wake up call type game in the big 10 tournament when there's like so much on the line, you're like the two seed, like, I don't really like that energy necessarily. I, you know, we, we talked about how, when the whole situation came where coach, uh, where coach Underwood benched the whole team to send a message. I don't like that. There's like, I got to challenge my guys in this first game of the big 10 tournament, but at the end of the day, they got by, like they had a wake up call and they got by and they won the basketball game. And in, in a game, in my opinion, that they had no business in winning. Cause so I think Ohio State all played them literally for the whole game, except for maybe that last minute or two. Yeah. Which I think, like, like stepping aside for a second, it's not good for Illinois that they got outplayed for most of this game by Ohio State. This is an NIT team. And I know they've been playing better under Jake Diebler, but like, NIT team with an interim coach outplayed Illinois for 36 minutes. And once again, for the second time in a month, Brad Underwood had to bench his starters for effort. Like, I. Greg, when I watch these games, I always like do things in my notepad on my iPhone just because I don't want to forget something sometimes. The very first bullet point from this game was that was really fun, but uh oh. Yeah. That, like, that was fun. Like, I love seeing Dane do that. I love seeing like Terrence Shannon do his thing and Coleman Hawkins make those winning plays down the stretch, but also like, uh oh. Long term, I don't, I, I feel less, I, I don't feel as good about um I don't feel I don't I don't feel as good about Illinois as I did coming into this game. Look, it's a good thing. Like it is this is what great teams do. They win games when they don't have it or when they're playing poorly. And that's what Illinois did tonight. And it was largely thanks to Coleman Hawkins and Terrence Shannon with some really big offensive plays late. He made free throws. He got that one little Euro step layup. Like a tie, we haven't even mentioned Ty Rogers double double tonight 12 points, 10 rebounds, 32 minutes. Brad finally trusted Ty Rogers. I thought he got repaid for that. Like, normally, when there have been effort concern games, he keeps Ty on the bench for some reason. And Ty's normally a very good effort guy, especially defensively. So, I don't know. I, uh, there's, there's so many ways you go about this. Like, Damask, awful. Coleman, really bad, but then really great late. Gary A, unplayable. Shannon, superstar. Danger, best of the year. Ty Rogers, I think his best of the year. Add it all up, not good that it adds up to, I think, worse than Ohio State today for most of the game, but really impressive after Illinois' late game stuff earlier in the season that they are now able to solve that, right? Is the late game concerns with Illinois, are those dead? I don't think they're fully dead yet. Is it because the ball was in Marcus Damas' hands, who was 3 for 15 with 50 yeah. seconds left in a one-point yeah. game? like? Yeah, the, the, this is the thing. And for me, when I look at closers, and I'll, I'll I'll take this to like the Tyson Walker example, me being a Michigan State fan. If you're Marcus Damask, go three for go three for fifteen, but for lack of a better term, lock lock in. It's the last four minutes of the game. We're in a dog fight with Ohio State. So like, I get that you're doing that, but he 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 didn't have that. He didn't have that. He didn't have that switch today. Like you yeah. saw at the Purdue, we, we were there at State Farm in the Purdue game. But he just went and got the ball and he went to the hole every single time he scored the basketball. I didn't see any of that today. Yeah. My largest issue with Damask is that when he is on the ball in clutch situations, there's only one thing that's going to happen. Like he, he is not a threat to create for others in late shot clock situations. And I don't like that. I think it's pretty one dimensional and his one dimension is a really tough two. So 
Like he can make them. He's had incredible games, but the mass fadeaways but, are but not also, how I want to win. Yeah, but he also is the best option though for Illinois, though, right? Like that's not, not tonight, not tonight. But I'm but I'm saying moving forward, like, are you suggesting that it should be somebody else? I think on nights that the mass clearly doesn't have it, I would not want the ball. Uh, like the only plan there was a Damask fadeaway, right? Because that's how many times has Damask played hero ball late, and it's a, it's just a fadeaway. That's his trick, and it's a great trick. The trick is good. It's really hard to guard. There's no threat that he's going to pass the ball ever. Like there's zero threat he's going to pass the ball. So if he's hot, yeah, let him cook. If he's not hot, why? Why are you living with that as your final answer? He got bailed out. I thought. Ev- Illinois letting Damas do that and also Damas being as bad as he was got bailed out by Coleman Hawkins beating Devin Royal for an offensive rebound. Like, call it what it is. If, if Ohio State gets that rebound, we're pointing at that play like, what the hell were they doing? Why did they do that? And then on the other end, I mean, as good as Tate was offensively, they were getting uncontested layups every time. So it's different. It's different if that was a one-point game there instead of a three-point game because they couldn't grab a rebound, you know? Yeah, but uh, all in all, you know, you you don't want to lose this game. Like this, it it, it would have been one that you don't want to lose, obviously. Um, but I'm I'm the one who always comes on here singing my praise about second weekend Illinois. I'm I'm singing it. It's a little lower tone. It's a little yeah, more. I sense you. I sense you tightening up here in March. Like all season, you've been happy go lucky. Defense doesn't matter. Woo, we're fun. Score ninety. Now all of a sudden, Illinois is in the seventies three straight games, and you're looking around like I don't know about this anymore. Yeah, I didn't sign up for this. You signed up for Dane. I did sign up for so Dane. You, you finally got what you're asking for, and you're like, I don't see it anymore. We're getting eighteen from Dane, and we're not scoring ninety points. Coleman Hawkins took four shots in this game. Marcus Damas took twenty one to get seven points. That's did one he- of the worst games I've ever seen. Like I'm, I, I know I'm harping on it, but he took 21 shots in 36 minutes to get seven points. He took 16 shots. Am I looking at it? What box? Wait, that? Oh, sorry. I was I, for some reason I'm adding his total shots okay, to five threes. Yeah, you, my bad. No, no, you're throwing me off. No, but I, I mean, it, it don't make it no better. He's three for 16. He took 16 shots. Sorry to get and, his seven. and and like easy. Some of those were a lot of like he was missing layups. He's bad. I I don't know what to make of it. It was weird. Um, knowing him, he'll be great next game. That's my expectation. But I guess we'll see. Brad post game had some interesting comments. Did you watch his quick on television post game? I actually did not know I was coming down here to set up. So they they were up three late. He said they tried to foul. He said the the direction to the team was to foul up three, and the team just didn't foul. And Brad was like laughing about it in the post game. I, I, I don't see the humor in that. He's like, yeah, yeah. I mean, those guys just, they don't do what you tell them. I told them foul. They didn't foul. <laughs> we got lucky. Like, it's March 15th. You had to bench your dudes for effort and you're laughing post game that they couldn't execute a foul up three. Like, huh? And I'm sorry. I'm, I'm such a big Brad guy. People know this. I think he's honest. I think he's colorful. I think he's entertaining. I think he recruits his ass off. I think he can coach. I love his teams. If they flame out with this team, if this team flames out in March and there's still signs of effort problems and just not being able to execute whatever he says in a timeout, that's all on Brad. Like, I don't get it. I don't get how this team has those problems at this point in the season. Because it's champagne? Because it's, because it's Illinois? It makes no sense, and they're still really good, but it's it doesn't make sense to me. Uh, Ohio State, I thought this was Jake Diebler coaching for his job. Do you agree with me, and do you think because they lost, he doesn't get the job? Yeah, I don't think he was getting it. You, you convinced me last night when we were recording that he's not getting the job regardless. Like It, it might lead to something else, like you said, but it, it, it wasn't going to lead to him getting the job at the end of this, no matter what. I think if he won this game, he might have gotten the job. Really? That's where I'm at. Yeah. Um, that, changed, that changed from your song yesterday. Well, I didn't think they would win this game. Oh, but but they didn't win the game, but they were there. Um, yeah, I think all in all, I think both sides won here. Illinois got a win. 
And Ohio State's going to get Dusty May and not an interim head coach who will probably be in the West Coast Conference next year. Like, <laughs> uh, one thing that we got to also point out: Jake Deeper has an impeccable fade. Yeah, he does. It's a great cut. It's a really nice cut. And uh, just lastly, they cut to the Illinois tunnel. Everybody's jumping around. John Sanderson led the run into the tunnel and then turned around in front of the camera and high-fived everyone in an orange quarter zip. My icon, my hero. I, John, I could not be more proud of you. Thank you for all you did. You are the biggest winner in college basketball today, John. You are. His his family, J- Little John, whatever his name is. What's his name? Little Jack. Is it John Sanderson Jr.? I don't know what his kid's name is. I don't know, I don't know what his kid's name is. See, that's, that's the reason you know he's not actually the good recruit. You were trying to tell me he is. You don't even know his name. Anyway, Little Sanderson was in the Illinois family section tonight. Hey. So, ILL, baby. Uh, oh, Cart, would you place a future on Illinois right now, yes or no? No. Well, that's probably smart. But if you did want to, I know a place you could do so. You could do so with us at my bookie. You can enter bracket contests for a chance to take home prizes up to $25,000. They got straight bets, props, odds boosts. Whatever it is you want, my bookie makes it easy to play your way and get paid for doing so. Sign up now. We have a welcome offer. Promo code SLEEPERS. Get a first deposit bonus up to $1,000. The link is in the description of this video. Use promo code SLEEPERS. Congrats, Illinois. Ohio State, I think congrats on getting a real head coach. Although Jake Diebler is good, but everybody wins tonight. Be happy, folks. Do I win? It's your birthday. You got a Dane game. Do you win? Yeah, my coach is gone. Yeah, and you saw your idol in an orange quarter zip. It's a great, great, It is, it is a really great, great day. Wow. Huh.